What is the dumbest way you've gotten a scar? Breaking up a cat fight. Scumbag neighbor decided he didn't want his cat anymore so just put him outside. I saw this and let him in because it was cold. He started a fight with my cat. I intervened and snagged him away, he bit and clawed my hand permanent scar. Zero regrets my cat was declawed before I adopted him so he could not adequately defend himself. Brought that cat to the pound. Before anyone flames me for bringing him to the pound, I confirmed with the neighbor he didn't get out. Neighbor saw no issue with just letting him out and not taking care of him, hence scumbag neighbor. I don't know how to explain it, but I have a scar on my right knee from one of my front teeth that would constantly hit and cause it to bleed when it would jump on the trampoline. I just remember one of those awkward jumps and I would land awkwardly on my legs that my knee would hit my face mouth it was worse when my brother and sister would purposely launch me in the air and I'd land terribly. I had buck teeth that would rest on my bottom lip, so it makes sense. Looking at the scar today, it's not dark anymore, but you can tell it's an old one. Went to have next when on implanted in my arm and they shot it into my muscle. It was cutting off the feeling in the nerves in my hand, so I had to go to the ER and they couldn't find it in my arm. They sedated me because I was getting upset and they were annoyed with me about it. Then, they just kept asking other medical professionals to see if they could fish around in my arm to get it. Now I have a scar from the stitches and the scar looks exactly like an ex-boyfriend's tattoo in the exact same place. I tried to be a hood during an altercation and broke a bottle holding it by the neck to use it as a weapon and funny enough, the dude I was having beef with, stopped and pointed out that my index finger was severely cut and was bleeding profusely. At first, I think I told him fuck you in Spanish but then saw myself that it was a pretty nasty cut. I ended up damaging mostly flesh but also a little ligament and required both internal and external stitching at the ER. Lessons learned, kinda thing. I nearly cut the tip of my index finger off in high school when I attempted to open a stubborn package of gummy bears with a serrated knife. The blood pretty much exploded out of my fingertip, splattering across our ceiling like a geyser low. Luckily it was still hanging on when I got to the hospital so I was able to keep it. I still don't have any feeling in my fingertip, above my Frankenstein-esque scar. Let this be a lesson to those other impatient gummy bear lovers, always use scissors. Told my niece to stand away from the pool ladder while I opened it, as the lock was broken and it would sometimes fall if you weren't careful. Well, she jumped on the cement platform for the pool ladder and I had to knock her out of the way because she distracted me and I didn't catch the ladder fell on me instead of her, luckily, and it left a gnarly gash on my shoulder right above my tattoo. Also almost cut my finger off with a pocket knife trying to cut cardboard. You live and learn, man shrugging. I went to a friend's house for a birthday party, when we were outside playing hide and seek in the dark childish I know but it's so fun, I was running. I was looking behind me and ran into her volleyball net. I made me fall backwards and took a piece of my skin on my chin with it. I now have a diagonal scar across my whole chin from it. We didn't think it was that bad until we went inside and saw it. I still laugh at thought of everyone standing there watching me on the ground. In 7th grade 65 the PE coach threw a softball to me so hard it split the webbing between my second and third finger. He knew I wasn't wearing a glove. It didn't hurt, in fact, didn't know it was a problem until I reached down to pick up the softball, and blood was gushing out from the split. Went to nurse, called home. Mom picked me up and went to clinic to get stitches. It wasn't until later that I was told the coach used to be called Old Rifle Arm when he was in college. I have a scar on my hand from a broken glass Coke bottle. I had dropped it in the top broke off but when I picked it up for some reason I decided to flip it up in the air thinking I could catch it on the non-broken end as it flipped in the air. As it descended I realized I didn't have any sort of skill which would make this a smart move but rather than just let it fall to the ground and break some more I did in fact catch it. Broken side first. Slicey slice. I had an eraser topper that I got from school that looked like a stereotypical smiley face. While gouging out its eyes with my pocket knife, I slipped and stabbed myself in the thumb. There was also the time I jumped off my front porch and stabbed the hardwood training katana downwards into the ground. The sword stopped instantly and my head kept moving, driving my eyebrow right into the handle, cutting me and breaking my glasses. I nearly put my damn eye out. I was holding my breath to show my dad how purple I could make my face. He wasn't paying attention and I was stubborn, so I held my breath till I passed out. I hit the floor and gashed my chin open. The next day I won this award for being smart basically, and at the award ceremony, all these teachers asked me what I did that resulted in those 13 stitches. 
When I told them, one teacher looked like she wanted to yank that award right out of my hands. We were taking the boys' b-ball team to watch Coach Carter in theaters when I was in middle school. Me from middle school was hyped. I had the notion, Coach Carter, A, eh, I bet they do push-ups in that movie, when I was in the shower. I'm going to do push-ups immediately. Tried to press up against a wall. I slipped, hit the side of the tub with my face, and my upper lip split open from the mouth to the nose. Needless to say, I was unable to attend the film. Tripped over the threshold of my front door with my hands full of groceries. Heavy groceries. I was kind of already bent over from picking the bags back up after unlocking my door, so when I fell face first into the carpet, I got a nasty rug burn on the side of my face right next to my eye. It's just a darker patch now, but it makes me look like I'm continuously healing from a sucker punch. It's been a few months I really hope it goes away fully lol. Stood up into the latch on a gate. When I was in third grade my neighbors and I were playing hide and seek. We were mostly in my friend's backyard, but this was in their garage, so we had to go through their front gate to get to it. I was running towards it but one of my friends was slightly faster and got through the gate first, shutting it behind them. It knocked me down, and when I stood up my head hit the latch hard. I had to have 8 stitches. Just last week and I cut my forehead pretty decently. Had an epileptic seizure and smashed my head in the bathroom. The ambulance guys insisted we go get some stitches. It'll leave a scar, no doubt. And the doctor who stitched me up was not impressed and referred my dumb ass to a neurologist because I am not taking my meds correctly. If I took my medicine like I'm supposed to this whole mess could have been avoided. But no, I'm a dumb ass. I have a scar on my chin from elementary school where it was our first recess of 4th grade and I was fat and wanted to try to do a flip on the gymnastics spars. I had never done a flip or used these types of bars or any type of gymnastics equipment before this. I fell over one bar and caught my chin on another, resulting in me busting my chin open and exposing some bones. I needed a bunch of stitches and still have a sizable scar on my chin. Fell from a pool shed and landed ass first on the tip of a wrought iron fence. A friend was on a pool shed roof, and I wanted up there as well. I started climbing up and reached up to have him help pull me up. My hand slipped and I fell backwards landing on the sharp tip of the wrought iron fence that surrounded the pool. Still grateful that I wasn't paralyzed or worse. Literally best case scenario was the small dent in my ass cheek that currently exists. Not me but my boyfriend. When he was like 10-12, he got hold of this glass made of copper with sharp edges from where you drink, basically. He was throwing it at the wall and catching it when it bounced back. A couple of throws later, it bounces back but not into his hand. It gets straight up lodged on his nose. Literally jabbed on it. It caused a lot of bleeding. He has a scar till date. If that's not the dumbest way, I don't know what is. Pop tart. Wild berry flavor. Permanent burn scars on my leg. I was young and dumb. Toasting my pop tart. When I pulled it out the frosting was so hot it was literally bubbling. I dropped it because it was burning my fingertips. Dropped it right onto my leg frosting side down. I went to wipe it away and my skin wiped away with it. Gave me almost third degree burns. Had to go straight to the hospital. Still have the scars 20 years later. My brother and I when we were probably about 5 and 7 years old, respectively were playing around and ended up getting into an argument about who would pretend to be Batman and who would be Robin. He decided to take the physical route to show he intended to be Batman and grabbed the nearest object to hit me with, a metal vacuum extension tube, and took a swing at my face with it. Ended up in the emergency room needing a few stitches. My friend held a lighter upside down, heating the metal tip of it. He told me it did leave a little lay on my arm. Me, not wanting to be a pussy, obliged. It did not leave a little lay. He pressed very hard for multiple seconds. I now have an inch wide circular scar that took weeks to heal. More than likely a third degree burn. It was bad. I have plenty of other scars I don't mind now. Just definitely the dumbest one I have. Marshmallow fluff. I cut my hand on marshmallow fluff. When I was a kid I thought I'd be a he-man and open my own jar of marshmallow fluff from my peanut butter fluff sandwich. Previous sandwich assembly had left fluff to harden around the edge of the jar. Where lid meets fluff, fluff gets thin and hard. One big grunt and twist and... Oh god why is my hand bleeding? 40 years later and there's still a scar along my palm. 12 year old me. Doing close to 30 miles per hour down a steep hill on my bike, no hands. Decided to pedal to go even faster still no hands. Well, even in the highest gear, 
At that speed there was zero resistance to pedaling and the pedal just dropped out from under me and I tumbled right over the handlebars and face first into the road. Amazingly I was only left with a small scar under my nose once all the scrapes finally healed. Found a recipe in a cookbook for how to pan sear and then bake a steak. The cookbook contained a warning beware the entire pan is 450 degrees. The steak was finished and the handle was sticking out over the stove. I thought I could just push it a little so the handle wouldn't catch and fall on someone's foot. Instant burn. At least I used the back of my fingers big. Ugly round scar on my left is hand ring finger. Subway sandwich burn. I was a sandwich artist and my co-worker was taking a sandwich out of the oven and the cheese grazed my arm and shook a piece of skin with it. I had a big blister that turned into a scar. Someone ate my arm skin for lunch. Absolutely horrible. I was in so much pain I ran to the back to scream. I didn't have a second to tell my co-worker to throw it out he was moving too fast to notice. Disaster D. I have an inch long scar on the inside of my thumb. I got it by pulling away from a chain link fence. I was walking along the bleachers at a football game, and turned to watch. I put my hands on the fence in front of me, but then I noticed a man with a camera directly in front of me. He moved the camera away from his face, giving me a displeased look. I then jumped out of the way, catching my thumb on the fence.